otherwise the helmet is awesome it's a it's a field of view way better than the ls2 i mean um i don't know side everywhere every which every way up down sideways hey thanks for watching we are going to look at the agv x3000 helmet today new helmet for me and how to get the comm system the cardo free comm 4 off the old helmet onto the new helmet and take a look at how to get this set up for motor vlogging my first time for setting up a gopro on a helmet and we're going to do it on this one and see how it works let's get it started so this is the agv x3000 helmet uh just a a standard helmet um but with a really retro look right just the styling of it is all about just being a retro helmet it's part of their legends series which they're kind of modeling these after uh, you know riders in the past that have worn agv but for me it's just about um, the fit of it they make a longer helmet which fits my longer than average oval head and the fit is great and just the look of it for me i mean i was looking for something that is just more of that retro style you know so what i had before was an ls2 uh, strobe i think they call this um, you know modular and i just got tired of the whole modular thing and even and even the shape of the helmet and the look of it so i really wanted to go a different direction i wanted to go without the moving chin bar and you know so i went with this and how does it get any better looking than this? Yeah, I really didn't want the sport style helmet, you know, no fins or gills or, you know, there's hardly even any, nothing raised up to make air vents, you know, so it just gives it such a, a smooth, um, sleek look to it. Venting is done right here. There's, this piece comes out. And so any venting is happening right here. There's good channels that run up across the top of the helmet to, to let that air flow. Um, so not a lot of venting, but uh, just really like the look of it. I like the fit. They uh, recommend, of course, when you get one of these, take it out of the box and wear it around the house and make sure it's going to feel right. So I did that. First thing I wanted to do was get my comm system from Cardo off the old helmet uh, and onto the new one. And I did a video showing how to install the Freecom 4 onto two different helmets. One was a showy, it looks really a lot like this one, and one was this guy. So differences are, um, for this one, you have to use their boom mic. Um, installation which puts the mic about here and it's out on a bendable boom piece right so that kind of became it just became a pain and something I didn't want to deal with was another reason I was glad to get away from the modular style helmet so on this helmet it'll just be it's just a, um, a simple mic that fits right inside the chin bar you can see right in there so it cleans it up quite a bit I haven't seen any other YouTube videos on putting comm systems on this helmet, maybe because it really <laughs> just wasn't designed for it. I mean, there's no indents really right in here where the headphones go. So a lot of helmets will actually have a, a cavity, but this doesn't have that. It does have, uh, the cheek pads are cut out for your ears and it does leave enough room there. So I was able to stick those headphones on and get them tucked away enough to where it doesn't bother me when I pull it on. They're right there. I can feel them right against my ears, right up next to my ears, but it's not causing a problem. When I installed on the other helmets, one of the things I talked about was getting the comm system onto a side of the helmet. You're going to use either a clip-on mount or a stick-on mount. So the worry was, you know, when you stick something on the side of the helmet, am I ever going to get it off without damaging the finish of the helmet, you know, because you don't want to, if you decide to use your helmet for something else or 
give it to somebody else and you don't want that comm system on there. But really, it came off uh, without a problem. And the part that sticks on is this base part down here. And then this part slides on and clips on. To get this piece off, I just used a hair dryer to heat up around the base of it as much as I could. And then gently just kind of be prying away from the helmet as I'm heating it up. And I use just something, a piece of a strong plastic just to pry away from it a little bit. Instead of, you know, don't do like a screwdriver or something, just be careful with the finish of the helmet. Eventually, it just started peeling away. And of course, the, the 3M pad was toast by that point, but um, I was able to get on Amazon and order um, more of that 3M stick pad and just put it on the back of this cradle, put it right on the new helmet. I, I had to cut it to fit the this mounting plate, but it seemed to work fine. And so, I've got that mounted, that's ready to go. I've got my headphones in and the mic in. If, and if you wanna see some details on how all that fits into a helmet, go check out this other video I have on installing the, that Cardo system. So here is the GoPro 7 Hero. This video is all about Christmas presents. I got all kinds of fun things. So GoPro Hero 7, great camera. Um, Check it out if you want to know for more, more information about that. There's a ton of good videos just talking about, you know, the quality, picture quality. A lot of people are using this for all kinds of vlogging. And um, so I got this guy and wanted to get it on my helmet. You know, start doing some vlogging. Really just start capturing some of the rides that, I've, that I do. It's just um, something I've been wanting to do. So I got that guy and needed to figure out a way, of course, to get it on the helmet. And there's a lot of ways to do that. One of the main things that you find is that people end up just sticking, you know, mounts on here. And I, you know, it's pretty permanent. And so I wanted to get away from that approach for this because I don't mind having the calm cradle on there all the time, but I didn't really want this whole thing stuck on my helmet all the time. I mean, if I was vlogging, all the time, I think I would have no problem with that. I would just modify the helmet so that it was built for vlogging. As it is, I really wanted to be able to put this thing on and off. I got hold of uh, this clamp and shout out to um, Cappuccino Moto who gave me this idea. He showed everybody kind of in one of his videos how he is capturing uh, GoPro footage and it's with one of these guys basically clamped right on the chin bar or you can take it and clamp it onto the side of your bike or on your handlebars or whatever you want to do. So it's a lot of flexibility. So I ended up with a J style clamp. I did need to purchase that. And then this clamp. And together you end up with uh, this. You get it like that and you've got quite a bit of adjustability as far as where your camera is going to point, right? So I can put it in this way if I'm clamping up from underneath, or I can pop this out, flip it over if I'm clamping on bars or something like that. So if I'm going to be putting this on the helmet, I really wanted some additional padding. So I've got some rubber pieces that I glued right onto the teeth of that clamp. So when you clamp this guy on, you can put it pretty much wherever you want it to be. Um, and you're looking at it now going, obviously, you've got this thing sticking down. But once you get your helmet on, though, this is not really in the way. This just kind of rests against your chin, so it doesn't become a big issue. I mean, it may look stupid, but it's pretty functional as far as being able to get it on and off. The other thing I did along with that is to get audio, a lot of people will buy an external adapter. You have to use an external adapter for the latest GoPros. And it's a, it's a small piece, almost the size of this comm unit. So you've got to get that mounted someplace, plugged in, and then route your mic. So instead of that, I went with um, a, a separate audio recorder. Uh, there's a lot of uh, guys out there doing that, just recording audio on a separate um, recorder. When you put it in your video editor, you sync your audio up to your video, right? So. That's how that works if you're not aware of that. I mean, many of you are, but that's the approach I took. So really, for my GoPro, all I have connected to the helmet is this, right? Then for audio, I have a, um, well, what I'm actually wearing right now 
and what I'm using to record audio is a, is a Sony stereo audio recorder. It's just, this is what it looks like I'm recording right now. I initially started out with just my phone, right? So I put the phone on voice record, put this lavalier mic in it, and, but the, um, the levels were so hot, it was so loud, it was just constant distortion uh, to the point where it was, it was horrible. And so these guys have adjustable input levels so that's why I got something like this Sony. Basically, this unit cost about the same as what I would have had to buy to to put on here for the external uh, the external microphone adapter is about fifty bucks, and I got this guy on Amazon for fifty dollars. You've got your audio recorder in the pocket in your pocket. You're going to route your mic up through here somewhere, and I can't show you that now because I'm wearing it, but. And then it can just set inside your helmet. You can tape it on or something like that. You know, again, I just really wanted to make this temporary. I did one test ride so far, and I'm going to show you some footage of that. And I just, after I got the helmet on, just, just slid it right up here inside and just let it rest against uh, the padding in here. I kind of tucked it behind the cheek pad, and it just stayed fine right here. And the way I've got that set up when I put it in the helmet. So I put a dead cat on it and that's what that is, right? So that just goes over the mic and it's gonna protect from the wind. However, my audio did not work out so good. Here's an example of what I ended up with for video, which I thought was fine. I think GoPro does a great job. Just turn it on and you just get great results. I am shooting in a wide mode, not the super wide. Audio just became, you know, as soon as I got up to speed and any wind noise started happening inside the helmet, it just uh, it did not work, as you can tell. I'm getting more wind on the way back, for sure. It's feeling more lift on the helmet. That's not going to be an issue for me. So, I'm going to be going back to the drawing board on the mic, miking option. And, uh, you know, if you have some ideas for me, if you're watching this and you've done this, Go ahead and throw some comments in for me and give me ideas on, you know, better ways to to protect from that wind noise, but still be able to hear uh, the voice clearly. You know, shout out to the, all the people who have done this and they've, they've got it working well because I've heard some amazing audio quality uh, while guys are riding, you know, at, at uh, high speeds on the freeway, still just getting great audio quality. So that's what I'm shooting for. We'll see how it works. I'm going to consider adding some additional dead catting onto this, possibly trying a different mic, a, an old Apple headphone mic. I may give that a shot if, if I can't figure something out with this lavalier. So helmet's almost complete. Next thing I'm going to do is, I mean, their visors, I got to say their visors are great and the visibility out of this helmet is fantastic. But I typically ride with a with a, a tinted visor. These guys come with a clear visor only. And so of course you've got to buy the tinted visor. But when I bought this a helmet on Cycle Gear, uh, bought it around Black Friday, got a pretty good deal on it. Got a, got a discount and also got a gift card that allowed me to pick up a um, tinted shield a little bit cheaper than that normally would have been. So this is the tinted shield for the X3000. And we're gonna pop that open and get that installed. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that on until we get it installed. Okay, shield change on an X3000. I guess I have to say, you know, X3000, it's not the easiest visor change. Um, it's really easy to take the visor off my LS2, and I've heard other helmets are easier to do, but you know what? We can make it happen. So this little protection thing here pops off. That comes off really easy. So, you know, I hope that those don't just like fall off while in normal use. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep track of these parts um, because they just kind of fall out from what I understand. So three millimeter Allen wrench, which I've obviously not got. So if I get the right size of three, three millimeter, this is a screw that has to come out. That's some pretty tight threads. Oh, they got some Loctite on there, which is probably a pretty good idea. Um, that is left side. Got a little C clamp. It actually just lifts straight up. 
And then the visor comes away and uh, this piece comes off, which is supposedly indexed. Yeah, hopefully this is, yeah, this is made so that it'll only go back on one way. Uh, and hopefully we can figure that out. One side is off. All right, so those are all our pieces from one side. Here goes the other side. Now our visor is free. Okay, I'm gonna start on the same side I finished up with. This piece can only fit like that. And likewise, this has little protrusions that need to fit just like that. Okay, and your visor goes over it. And it will also only fit in, a, in one way, it's indexed. And so now, the clamp, it's also got um, little indexes around here, so the clamp should fit just like, okay, like that. Okay, then this screw goes back on. Okay, so that's one side. I'm not gonna tighten that up super tight yet. I'm gonna get the other side set. Um, now I need to get that visor across here to fit over that. That could be the tricky part. There we go. Once you get it aligned right, it should just pop right in there. Okay, and then I've got this clamp. Yeah, they've done a good job of making sure that that really only has one way that it can fit on there. And then uh, your screw, and then your these caps will go on. And that should be it. Definitely not the uh, not a roadside change you'd want to have to make, but it works. Okay, let's test this out, make sure it's working right. Looks good. And uh, so I'm gonna just make sure those things are snug. So there is the AGV with the smoke, the tinted visor. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button and uh, give me your ideas. Uh, what do you think of the helmet? What do you think of clear versus tinted helmets? Give me your ideas on um, my GoPro setup as well. You know, if you've got any ideas for my audio issues, let me know. I'm gonna try to do another test, although riding weather is not ideal right now, just a lot of rain and it's pretty cold. And so as soon as I can, I'm gonna get out and do another test with my audio. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Ride safe.